I can't stand anything about you. So, just leave. We'll live without you. Understood. I quickly gathered mine and my daughter's belongings and left the house. Hey, wait. Where did you all go? I even went to your parents' house, but they said you weren't there. Please, I'm begging you, come back home. Despite having driven us out, my husband and mother-in-law were desperately pleading for us to return. Sorry, but we're strangers now. My name is Kate. I'm a 38-year-old office worker. I've been married to Jack for five years. We have a four-year-old daughter, Sophie. We were a happy family of three. Both of us worked, living a dual-income life. Jack's company could be called nothing short of a sweatshop, and no matter how much overtime he worked, his salary was quite low. So, I worked harder to support our family. I thought it was natural as a married couple, and never felt burdened that I had to shoulder more. I never saw this as a problem. People often said I had a big heart or was kind. My colleagues, friends, and parents said the same, so I analyzed myself as someone who avoids conflicts. But now, I'm facing a problem. It's my mother-in-law. Recently, my father-in-law passed away due to illness, and she, now alone, suddenly moved into our house. At first, mother-in-law said, I can't stop crying alone. I want to stay with you for a while. So, Jack and I allowed her to stay. I thought it was a matter of a day or two. But, while we were at work, she brought all her belongings into our house. She even took over the guest room as her own. When I saw this, I immediately contacted Jack. I asked, Hey, do you think your mom might end up living with us permanently? When I asked this, Jack said something unbelievable. Jack replied, I gave her permission. From now on, she's going to live with us. I exclaimed, What? Wait a minute. How can you decide such a big thing without consulting me? Jack defended, My mom is depressed after losing my dad. It's only natural for me, her son, to want to support her, right? Or what? Are you saying my mom should live alone and sad? That's heartless. No, that's not what I'm saying. If you had discussed it with me beforehand, I wouldn't be saying this. So why do I need to get your permission for everything? It's already decided that mom will live with us, so it's better she came quickly. He said that angrily and went to the bathroom. As I sighed, my mother-in-law suddenly entered the room. Oh, what's going on? I heard your earlier conversation. You think of me as a nuisance, don't you? No, it's not like that. I was just surprised because I hadn't heard anything from Jack and you brought your belongings in. I understand you now. You dislike me. No, I don't dislike you. No, if you didn't dislike me, you wouldn't think of sending me back home especially when I'm grieving my husband's loss. But that's not. Both my husband and mother-in-law were incredibly paranoid. They put the blame on me, ignoring their own actions. I live in this house too, and deciding to live together without my consent is unreasonable. If the roles were reversed, my husband would be furious. Why am I the only one being blamed? And so, I was forced into living with my mother-in-law, Kate, I want grilled bacon for breakfast. Well, um, my husband, daughter, and I usually have bread for breakfast. So what? I said I want it. Could you make it, please? My mother-in-law took it for granted that I should cook. Then, my husband, who's not a morning person, woke up. What's going on so early in the morning? Seeing Jack awake, she acted as if she found an ally in him and started to complain about me. Kate is being mean to me. Mean? How? She knows I don't like bread, but insists I eat it. Really? You're bullying my mom when I'm not around? No, that's not true. I just said we usually have bread for breakfast. Isn't that like forcing her? She wants grilled bacon, so you should just make it quickly. But, every morning, I make lunch for myself, my husband, and my daughter, so I'm busy. 
That's why I usually choose bread for breakfast as it's easier to prepare. It's already hard being busy, and now I have to cook for my mother-in-law too. But no matter how difficult it was, I couldn't win against my husband and mother-in-law. Eventually, I ended up preparing grilled bacon every day, as my mother-in-law wanted. Moreover, she demanded grilled bacon every morning, which meant waking up early to prepare, and the smoky smell and cleanup were troublesome. It smells. My daughter started disliking breakfast every morning because of the smoky smell. Feeling sorry for her, I decided to talk to my husband. Your mother has been eating grilled bacon every day and Sophie is bothered by the smell and losing her appetite. I don't mind cooking it, but could we reduce the frequency of grilled bacon? Can you talk to your mother? The smell sticks to my clothes, and I can't change until after breakfast, so it's a bit of a problem. He made a face as if it were a hassle. What's wrong with mom eating what she wants? You should discipline Sophie better. What if it traumatizes her? She might start hating it. If you disciplined her properly, it would be fine. That's harsh. It's not about discipline. Isn't it wrong to force something on others despite their discomfort? Enough. I don't mind mom eating grilled bacon every day, so it's not a problem. Stop making a fuss over nothing. Making a fuss over nothing? You were the one who decided on your mother moving in without consulting us. Be a bit kinder to me and Sophie. What? Are you saying I don't care about my family? You really say terrible things. I regret marrying someone like you. What is he talking about? Who is really being cruel here? I was becoming increasingly disappointed in my husband. And again, my mother-in-law had been eavesdropping on our conversation. While my husband was in the bath, my mother-in-law came to me. You were talking bad about me again, weren't you? Is eating grilled bacon such a bad thing? Were you eavesdropping again? The door wasn't open, and this room is supposed to be soundproof. So, she must have been listening at the door. Just thinking about it gave me the creeps. After that, my mother-in-law and husband started being harsh not just to me, but also to my daughter. Hey, why are toys left here? Don't put them in such places. I want to relax, so play quietly. It's the weekend, my daughter should be able to play happily. But my husband and mother-in-law treated her like a nuisance. So, on days off, I started taking my daughter out to play. She used to be fond of her father, but lately, she's been avoiding him completely. For breakfast, I started preparing my mother-in-law and husband's meals early and then having breakfast at a cafe with my daughter. My husband and mother-in-law, despite their selfishness, got upset that we were avoiding them. You're monopolizing Sophie. That's why she dislikes me and Jack. Let her play with us more. I can't understand what she was talking about. If I talked back, they would just get more annoying and angry. How about we all go somewhere together next time? An amusement park might make Sophie happy. An amusement park is just tiring. Ah, uh, okay. How about the zoo? No, animals smell bad. That's out of the question. Seriously, what is with her? Then, how about the aquarium? What's fun about watching fish? She's really troublesome. So, where do you want to go? How about a church tour? Huh? I'll sync up with Jack and plan it. Wait, that would be boring for Sophie. What are you talking about? Children will surely enjoy it. Let's go on our next day off. Kate, you'll drive. Ah, uh, okay. I just don't get along with my mother-in-law. It's ridiculous that she talks about wanting to bond with my daughter, yet plans something without considering her at all. My husband seemed to agree with my mother-in-law's suggestion, and so it was decided that the four of us would go on a church tour next weekend. The next day, when I told my daughter about the temple tour, her excitement clearly dropped at the thought of going out with my husband and mother-in-law. I'm sorry, Sophie. If you don't enjoy it, maybe we can go to the amusement park next time. Okay. I understand. 
I felt guilty for making my daughter feel this way, but we ended up going on the church tour during our holiday. I didn't particularly dislike church and wanted to visit them when I had time. But I wanted to go with someone interested in church or someone whose company I enjoyed. It was hard knowing my daughter wasn't keen on going, yet feeling like we had to. And having to drive was an additional hassle. She was very excited and insisted we leave early in the morning. I drove while still sleepy, trying my best. After driving for about two or three hours, we finally arrived at the church. My husband and mother-in-law were excited upon arriving at the church, but Sophie, having woken up early, was very sleepy. I was tired from driving early in the morning and didn't have much energy to explore the church. I would have preferred to sit and rest in a cafe. But since the purpose was for my husband and mother-in-law to spend time with Sophie, we couldn't just rest. Sophie, sleepy as she was, seemed to be having a hard time being dragged around by them. After touring church all morning, it was finally lunchtime. I thought a nearby Italian restaurant looked good, but once again, my mother-in-law made her own decision. There's a delicious grilled bacon and hamburger meal place nearby. I felt frustrated. Why did we have to eat grilled bacon when Sophie disliked it, even when eating out? But with my husband agreeing with my mother-in-law, we ended up going to an American restaurant. And true to her word, my mother-in-law ordered a grilled smoked bacon meal. Sophie's mood was visibly down. Despite Sophie's obvious discomfort, my mother-in-law and husband seemed oblivious, enjoying themselves. Even during what could have been a relaxing lunch, Sophie and I couldn't find any peace. After lunch, we continued to walk around a lot, leaving both Sophie and me with sore feet. I couldn't help but think that an amusement park would have been better if we were going to walk so much. And I still had to drive us back home. I was really tired. When we finally got home, my mother-in-law and husband exclaimed loudly. Ah, oh, so tired. Taking care of a child after so long. I'm completely exhausted. Yeah, seriously. Hearing them talk like that really infuriated me. I wanted to punch them. I despised them both from the bottom of my heart. Together, they were like a pair of monstrous nuisances. My husband and mother-in-law continued to cause trouble for me and Sophie. Seeing Sophie getting increasingly worn out was the last straw for me. Can you please stop? I won't ask you to move out, but living so selfishly is really causing us trouble. You occupy the sofa and watch movies when Sophie wants to watch her shows. And every day when we're not home, you order food for lunch. You don't contribute a penny to the house, so why all this extravagance? And about breakfast, if you're going to live this selfishly, could you please leave? I was so stressed out, I blurted all this out to my mother-in-law. She looked shocked at first, but then got angry. Who do you think you are? You're living off Jack, and you have the nerve to say this. Excuse me? Living off him? I work too, you know. Your salary must be measly, right? We live in this nice apartment all thanks to my son. And you don't even appreciate it, just spouting nonsense. Fine, leave this house then. What? A daughter-in-law like you is not needed in this house. You're a nuisance. I never liked anything about you anyway. We'll live as a family of three, so just leave. Understood. But it won't be three people. It'll be just the two of you. I'm taking Sophie with me. As if that's going to happen. Sophie would want to stay with her father, Jack. We'll see about that. But first, I'm taking Sophie back to my parents' home. Do whatever you want. Oh, and while you're at it, please take this too. She handed me a divorce paper she had pulled out from a drawer, already filled out by Jack. I wondered when they had prepared this. I took it, despite feeling bewildered. Understood. All hand in it. Make sure you do. Don't come crying back to me later. She had a triumphant look on her face. My husband was out with his friends, so this was my chance to leave. 
I quickly gathered mine and my daughter's belongings and left. I put my daughter in the car and headed to my parents' house. On the way, I called my parents to let them know we were coming. When we arrived, my parents warmly welcomed us. I left Sophie with my parents and immediately went to file for divorce. Thus, my divorce from my husband was finalized. A few hours later, my ex-husband called. I heard from mom, you made her angry with your cheeky words, didn't you? Did you file the divorce papers? I can't defend you anymore. Of course, I filed them just a while ago. Oh, and you'll soon realize who really is in trouble. What? What are you talking about? Never mind. We're not a couple anymore. Yeah, good riddance. But I'm taking custody of Sophie. Sorry, but I can't let you do that. You can say what you want, but Sophie will choose to live with me and my mom. You don't stand a chance. I wondered where he got such confidence. Feeling the conversation was too bothersome, I hung up. I quickly rented a new apartment and moved in with my daughter. About a month later, my ex-husband called again. Hey, where are you right now? I went to your parents' house, but you weren't there. Why should I, a stranger to you, tell you where I live? Because I'm in trouble without you paying the rent. Oh, finally realized? I was the one with a higher income, and I paid the rent for that house. Why didn't you tell me that? I did tell you. Remember? I said we couldn't afford a house with a monthly rent of $3,000 on your salary of $1,800. Then you got angry and asked if I was planning not to contribute. So, I showed you the joint account to prove we had enough money to rent it. Uh, I thought I was earning more. I work so hard every day. My husband had no idea how much he was earning because he left all the financial management to me. Really, it's incredible how clueless he was. Anyway, I was the one supporting our life in that house. While working as an employee, I also earned extra income from stock investments. Really? So, I was the one paying the $3,000 rent. But now that we're divorced and I've left the house, you'll have to pay it yourself. I can afford to pay $3,000 a month. My ex-husband said this almost in tears. It sounded like he had put the phone on speaker because I could hear my mother-in-law's voice too. Please, come back. I'll apologize as much as you want. Let's live together happily as a family of four again. I'm sorry, but we're strangers now, and I can't help you. You should give up on that house and live within your means. That's true, but... We thought we had more money and spent too much. Before we knew it, we had almost no savings left, and we have a lot of revolving credit debt. We can't afford to pay $3,000, and we can't even move. Oh, that's a dire situation. Still, I feel nothing about it. We're strangers now, so good luck. But honestly, I don't even want to wish you that. This is the last time I'll say this, serves you right, you terrible pair. With that, I hung up the phone and blocked their number. Through a lawyer, I secured custody of Sophie and completely cut ties with them. Rumor has it that my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law spent about a month in internet cafes before moving into a cheap $200 a month apartment. Their room is falling apart, leading to a miserable life. They can't move because they need to pay off their debt. It's all self-inflicted, and honestly, it feels good. Meanwhile, Sophie and I are living a very comfortable life. My job is stable, and I have a good income. Most importantly, we're living a stress-free life. Moving forward, I plan to continue watching Sophie grow, maintaining a stable life through my job and stock investments.